everybody, the Two for Life here, bringing you guys a brand new archetype analysis. Today we are talking about the second of the three archetypes in Destiny Soldiers, and honestly probably the underdog of the set, and that is Abyss Actors. Now, Abyss Actors are a pendulum deck, and they are the brand new archetype of Destiny Soldiers. The other two archetypes are archetypes that are being revisited, revamped, and given new support cards. This is a completely brand new archetype, and is an anime deck, and sadly from a guy who doesn't get to duel much, <laughs> okay? If you guys have been following Arcfi, Salvatore, the guy who plays Abyss Actors, he also played Yosenjus, Monarchs... Uh, some dark deck that I don't think we're ever gonna get because there's literally three or four cards for the deck and the guy uh, he, he jumps decks all the time but however he's stuck with Abyss Actors the longest uh, mostly because I think it fits with him uh, although the jumping deck that kind of thing also fits with him I felt like that Konami was kind of making him as a parody of the uh, st like stereotypical tryhard Yu-Gi-Oh player who's always switching decks because oh hey this is a new thing it's much better oh wait no this is a new thing that's much better uh, and so that's kind of like the whole thing around that but however this deck is actually really 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 good <laughs> like and i think that's one of the reasons why you stuck with it sadly though i don't think we're gonna get too much support outside of this mount i mean yes there are two cards from the uh ocg that we still don't have heck i don't even think this is out in the ocg yet i think it's coming out in the dimension box and i'm not entirely sure if that's out yet or not and uh yeah, it's a pretty, pretty good deck, or at least in my opinion, <laughs> but I was going to be in the minority with that. So let's go ahead and talk about them and what I think are the pros and cons and if they'll do well or not. But sadly, in terms of future support, two cards, and honestly, one's like really good, the other not so much. And so in terms of future support, they don't have that like good what's the word i'm looking for good horizons i don't know <laughs> anyway so uh first and foremost let's go ahead and talk about the boss monsters of the deck abyss actor evil heal and abyss actor superstar so evil heal he is a level eight he's a 3k 2000 uh stat wise with scale of one which is really really good and he has two pretty good effects actually has a lot of really good effects not just two uh both his pendulum effect and his monster effect are pretty useful <clears throat> excuse me so his pendulum effect is once per turn you contribute an abyss actor monster then target one face up monster your opponent controls it loses attack equal to the original attack of the attributed monster until the end of this turn even if this card leaves the field that is really really helpful because honestly stat wise abyss actors are actually kind of decent but honestly they have some low-end monsters that might have trouble getting over uh bigger things not only that but also it really really helps with uh, being able to get their effects off, especially in regards to one particular spell card that we're going to get to. And it really does help with just getting more damage, and it's really, really nice. Not to mention, if you do it before you Pendulum Summon, you can just Pendulum back to Tributed Monster. I really, really like this card. And uh, you're going to see a lot of attack and defense manipulation. I think this is supposed to kind of mirror Performer Pals and how they're supposed to work, where it's all about attack and defense manipulation, except this is more hardwired into the actual archetype and works really well, whereas Performer Pals abandon that for a lot of search and draw power, which isn't that bad either, but this deck could really use some of the search and draw power. <laughs> so I really do like his pendulum effect. His monster effect is where it shines, though. If he is normal or special summoned, you can target one face up monster your opponent controls and loses a thousand attack for each abyss actor monster you currently control until the end of this turn. When this card destroys an opponent's monster by battle, you can target one abyss script spell card in your graveyard, set that card. So abyss scripts we'll get to here once we get to the spells. There, the majority of their spell support in the deck really revolves around the abyss scripts, and it really is a real weird and interesting, but also really cool. And I really like this playstyle. Um, but however, with that being said, I really do like both of these effects. Being able to drop something by potentially five thousand, which means you could potentially run over something as big as like Dragon Master Knight or Five Headed Dragon. Granted, though, you never see those cards, but potentially, yes, you could run over something that big. Uh, and if he kills a monster in battle, you can just set one of your spell cards back onto your field, which is really, really nice just being able to get every occurrence. Both effects, by the way, are not once per turn. Uh, so if you summon multiples of these guys, you're going to be able to get all their effects. And uh, especially if you use it in, in uh, tandem with uh, Twinkle Little Star, uh, whom of which we will get to whenever we get to the future support. 
oh my god, you'll be able to just get so much plussing, it's ridiculous. But really, really honestly, this guy is really good. The biggest thing that holds him back is his level, because the majority of the high skills of this deck is 8. <laughs> In fact, this deck has exactly one high skill. One inherent high skill. Okay, the two guys that we're getting down later on in the line are both high skills as well. But currently, TCG-wise, there is only one high skill in the deck. That's ridiculous. And believe it or not, but this thing's like a one-of in non-pure variants. <laughs> and we'll get to why here shortly. So, next up is Abyss Actor Superstar. Whom of which I think is supposed to be the monster incarnation of Salvatore. He even kind of looks like him. <laughs> so, uh, he's a level 7, 2500 attack, 1800 defense. Uh, quite obviously, he's supposed to kind of mirror Odd Eyes. Uh, which obviously also puts that whole, like, tandem in how... I think Salvatore's kind of sort of the rival. I know, like, I know Ryu... Not Ryu, G. Reiji is technically the rival. But, honestly, Salvatore fits that bill a lot more than Reiji in my opinion sometimes although Salatori is more comic relief so 2500 attack 1800 defense skill of three which I actually really like that skill uh generally speaking everything in this deck is four through eight yes they do have two level ones uh and a random level two for some reason but hey whatever so really decent pendulum scale on everything its pendulum effect is pretty nice as well. Once per turn, you contribute an abyss actor, then target one abyss script in your spell and trap card. Sorry, spell card in your graveyard. Add it to your hand. Really, really, really nice. Just being able to add back any of your abyss scripts, and is really aside from evil heal, the decks only two ways to get back your abyss scripts after they go to grave. Uh, now that being said, though, you do have two ways to get them back, and both of these guys are a three of in just about any variant of abyss actors. So. You're able to easily get back your cards, which means you don't really need to play too many of the Abyss scripts, although you still kind of do because they're all really good, except for this one. This one's crap, <laughs> but we'll get to that here shortly. So his monster effect is also really good and really certifies him as the main star of the show. When he is normal or special summoned, your opponent's uh, spell and trap cards and effects cannot be activated, so your opponent can't bottomless his summon. They can't uh, break their skill him on summon. I don't know why they would, but they can't basically respond to his summon provided he was properly summoned. So if they actually like saw him warning his summon, they can. They just can't do anything in response to the actual summon. Your opponent can't torrential, they can't bottomless, they can't compulse him back. They gotta wait. <laughs> now that being said though, if you pendulum summon him along with like a bunch of other guys, that is really good because he protects your other guys as they all come out onto the stage, i.e. battlefield. Monster Sun, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> so, once per turn, you can set one of script spell card directly from your deck, but it's sent to the graveyard during the end phase. That last part where it's sent to the end to the graveyard during the end phase annoys me, okay? Because it really incentivizes you incentivizes you to use it right then and there. But however, sometimes you don't want to. Like you might want to do it like a, like sometimes you just want to get your abyss script out of your deck and stuff. And be able to hopefully trigger their effects, although their effects to trigger are kind of annoying. Uh, that being their destruction effects. Yes, these cards have dual utility, and <laughs> it can punish your opponent pretty hard. But with that being said, though, being able to search out any Abyss script is really, really good. And also, it's not a hard once per turn, just like Evil Heal, so if you have multiple superstars, you can get multiple Abyss scripts, which is really, really, really good. Uh, I'd say my biggest issue, aside from it going to Graveyard at end turn, is that you can't get the Abyss prop. I don't know why they made this an Abyss prop instead of Abyss script. I guess, yeah, it makes sense that why that's not an Abyss script. These are all books, <laughs> and this is a uh, wagon. <laughs> so, yeah, I guess that actually makes a lot of sense now that I think about it. But still, it's kind of annoying, like, like still. <laughs> Anyways, so now then, on to the main level 4s. They have three level 4s, and... Honestly, all of them are pretty good. And yes, I know there is a fourth one coming out later, but again, we'll get to her. Uh, so, first and foremost is Sassy Rookie. The highest in terms of attack power. And he has really good effects, too. Like, really, honestly, I can't think of a single bad effect, aside from this card, <laughs> for this archetype. They all have really, really good effects. So, Sassy Rookie, he's a level 4, 1700 attack, 1000 defense. Scale of 2. He's a Dark Fiend, just like everybody else in the deck. If an Abyss Actor monster or monsters you control would be destroyed by battle or an opponent's card effect, you can destroy this card instead by using the P-Scale. So you can offer a layer of protection for your cards, which is really, really, really good and helps out a lot. Now then, his monster effect is also pretty good. The first time this card would be destroyed by battle or card effect each turn, it is not destroyed. 
if this card is destroyed by a battle or in, if this card in its owner's monster zone is destroyed by an opponent's card effect, you can special summon one level 4 lower Abyss Actor monster from your deck except Abyss Actor Sassy Rookie. If this card is destroyed in the Pendulum zone, you can target one level 4 lower monster your opponent controls and destroy it. So he has a lot of utility. First and foremost, he can't be destroyed by battle or card effect once per turn, which allows you to combo him really well with uh, Leading Lady, who I keep wanting to call by her Japanese name, which is Pretty Heroine. I don't know why they changed it, but whatever. Uh, so, and of course, I'll cover her here shortly. So, Sassy Rookie, he combos really well with so many other monsters in the deck. The two effects really do conflict with each other, though. But, however, that extra layer of defense is also really nice because it does, this deck oftentimes is stuck using only its cards because a lot of their cards say, you can only summon Abyss Actors this turn, which is really, really annoying. But, however, it's a pretty good card overall. I really, really like it. Uh, of course, the whole conflicting effects is a bit annoying, but, however, I really do like it, being able to just tutor out any of your level 4 or lower 1s from your deck. Uh, not only that, but also if it's destroyed in P-Scale, it can it can punish your opponent. Also, destroying it to protect your guys will trigger his destruction effect, so you do get to pop something while also protecting your creatures, which is really, really, really good and useful. My biggest issue with his destruction effect is, is that he can't destroy any monster. It has to be level 4 or lower, which is kind of annoying to be completely honest because oftentimes like let's say if your opponent has an abc dragon buster oh hey you can't destroy it because he's level eight <laughs> which is very very annoying but still he's a really good monster overall and i really do like all three of his effects next up we have wild hope easily the best card in the deck <laughs> okay so he's a p scale 2 1600 attack 1200 defense level four uh pendulum effect once per turn you can target one abyss actor card in your other p scale its pendulum scale becomes 9 until the end of this turn. So that opens you up to being able to summon Evil Heal, which you can't if you just have Funky Chame Comedian in your other P-Scale. However, the issue is, until the end of this turn, you cannot spell summon monsters except for the rest, except for Abyss Actors for the rest of the turn. So that's a bit annoying, so you gotta make your plays that are not Abyss Actors beforehand. But however, it's not that bad really honestly it's just usually the first pendulum summon that's kind of annoying because you can't make a huge huge board but you can get you can set up everything and then next turn okay then make the rank fours which really does slow it down but generally speaking you do not want to overlay with this deck it's very weird but because of how well the deck works with everything and because of the abyss scripts generally speaking you don't really want to overlay unless you absolutely have to which isn't terrible but also isn't all that great either but still so, now, why is he the best card aside from just being able to let you summon anything in the archetype aside from level 1s? Well, he is a searcher. Okay, so, monster effect. Once per turn, you can make this card gain attack, well, 100 attack, for each of the best actor monster you can currently control with different names until the end of this turn. If this card is destroyed by battle or card effect, you can add one of the best actor card from your deck to your hand, except himself, you can only use each effect of him once per turn. So, if he is destroyed in the P-Scale and the monster zone, by battle or by card effect, you can add any Abyss Actor from your deck to your hand. And notice that it says card, okay? So you can add any of these guys or the trap card because the Abyss Actor trap card, it does have Abyss Actor in the name. So you can search out, what, that's eight, seven monsters? Oh, wait, no, you can't search themselves. So that's six monsters and a trap card that you can search, which is really, really, really good. That covers a lot of ground, and you can grab just about everything. Not to mention you can grab the other searcher in a deck, so you can just literally grab himself after you grab the other searcher it's like you're searching for a searcher to grab a searcher <laughs> which is kind of redundant now that i think about it but still really useful overall he is the best card in the deck hands down or least monster in terms of like the monsters he's easily the best monster very 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 good card I, and i also just love the artwork i love the artwork on all these and the secret rares are so pretty <laughs> next up we get to leading lady she is Probably, like, the second best level 4, like, right behind Wild Hope. <laughs> so, and you generally also want to have her and Wild Hope in your P-Scales, because her Pendulum Scale effect is, like, amazing for his deck. So, P-Scale 2, 1500 attack, 1000 defense. Once per turn, when you take battle damage from opponent's attacking monster, and that's the biggest annoying part about this, is that it has to be an opponent's attacking monster, you can activate one of these effects. Either that monster loses attack equal to the battle damage you took, even if this card leaves the field, and that's permanent, by the way. <laughs> and the great thing about that is that it doesn't target, so if you're going against something like a Leo or 
anything in Cosmos, it just drops the attack by the damage permanently and does not target, which is amazing. Or you can add one face up of this actor pendulum monster if you're, from your extra deck to your hand with attack less than or equal to the damage you took. The main reason for the second effect is to get back to level 1s. Very understandable. I just hope one day we'll get a scale 0 so we can actually pendulum summon level 1s. That'd be really, really nice. So her pendulum effects are really, 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 really good and really, really nice. Uh, now you could technically use both effects in one turn if you have two of her in the pendulum scales, but obviously you don't want to do that. So they're both good effects that you're generally going to use once a turn and really really does help out with the deck especially considering some of the uh, spell cards now her monster effect she has a lot of monster effects like all these cards have so many effects it's crazy her monster effect is once per turn when battle damage is inflicted to you uh you can target one face up monster your opponent controls it loses attack to equal to that battling uh that battle damage when this card is destroyed by battle or if this card in its owner's monster zone is destroyed by the opponent's card effect you can set one of the script spell card directly from your deck that is really good so her monster effect is basically a targeting version of her pendulum effect but however it can also resolve during your turn so that's why she really combos well with sassy rookie because you can attack into something uh take the damage from the battle uh you won't lose your sassy rookie and then you use uh leading lady's effect to drop that monster's attack power by the damage you took and then attack over it with leading lady which is pretty good it, there's better ways of doing that but it's pretty useful and then her monster effect being able to just set any of your uh, abyss act uh, sorry abyss scripts from your deck is really 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 good and really helpful uh that effect doesn't really trigger too often though because usually you do end up overlaying with her or you trigger her off for other stuff but when it does go off it's really really nice now then for the level ones there's funky comedian this guy really could have been better but he's not terrible <laughs> so he's a level one 300 attack 200 defense scale of eight obviously he's supposed to be like the exact opposite of evil heal uh so his monster, sorry, his pendulum effect is the exact opposite of Evil Heal. Whereas Evil Heal lets you tribute off a monster to reduce the attack of an opponent's monster. Funky Comedian says you can tribute off an Abyss Actor to increase the attack of one of your other Abyss Actors. Which isn't that bad. It, again, it combos with uh, Evil Heal and stuff and you can get to some really high attack powers. But again, it's also like really not all that great. Because <laughs> like it just... The main thing about him is the level. <laughs> okay. Now, the I actually do kind of like the Pendulum Effect, but honestly, for both him and Evil Heal, you don't really use either effect too much because you would much rather be able to just attack with multiple monsters than just one really big monster. Uh, of course, there are times where you might need to do that, but again, it doesn't really come up too much, at least in my testing. I've never really had to do it. Uh, so his monster effect is also kind of interesting. Uh, <laughs> that's the best word I can think of for it. So if this card is normal or special summon, you can make this card gain 300 attack for each abyss actor monster you currently control. So he can at max gain 1500 attack, counting himself, and then he becomes 1800, which isn't terrible for a level one, uh, especially for a level one. But however, <laughs> the attack boost only lasts until the end of the turn. That's the biggest issue with him. And then once per turn, you can target one other Abyss Actor monster you control. It gains attack equal to this card's current attack until the end of this turn. This card cannot attack to turn this card. This effect is activated. You can only use this effect of Abyss Actor Funky Comedian once per turn. So again, you can kind of see why he's honestly probably the worst Abyss Actor in the deck. And honestly, he'll probably be dropped completely once we get these two. Uh, but however... He still has some utility uses, and that's why in non-pure variants, you only really see one, if any, of him. If only because he's a high skill and he doesn't limit you to just Abyss Actors. And that's really the big thing about him, is that he's a generic high skill and doesn't restrict your summoning to just Abyss Actors. And then we got the better level 1, Abyss Actor Extra. <laughs> so he's a level 1, 100 attack, 100 defense, scale of 3, being dark. Uh, his pendulum effect is if your opponent controls a monster, you can special and discard from your pendulum zone. You can only use this effect of Abyss Actor Extras once per turn. The idea is so that you don't have to use up your normal summon, which I actually really, really like because just being able to do anything that doesn't use up your normal summon is really, really, really nice. 
Uh, his monster effect is, as you contribute this card, place one Abyss Act or Pendulum Monster from your deck into your Pendulum Zone. Also, for the rest of this turn, you cannot Pendulum Summon Monsters except Abyss Act or Monsters. Sorry, Special Summon Monsters except Abyss Act or Monsters. Nor activate the Pendulum Effect of Abyss Act or Extras. You can only use this effect of Abyss Act or Extras once per turn. So, he knocks you into just Abyss Actors like Wild Hope does, but he gets you to your scales, which is the really, really good point. And, of course, he's a level 1, so you can 1-for-1 one one him. There's so many ways to get him out of your deck and onto your field and be able to use his effect. It's really, really, really good. And my biggest issue with him is obviously locking you into uh, Abyss Actors only. Again, it's like a flawed hope. Locking you only into Abyss Actors is a, a really weird design choice for Konami. Like, honestly, I thought they were kind of done putting all these limits on the Pendulums. But then they come out, of, out with Abyss Actors, which are honestly a really good Pendulum deck in my opinion. But, however, due to Konami going back to their old ways of how they limited uh, the early pendulums and not letting you do anything except for the oh, except for their in-archetype stuff, uh, is kind of annoying. <laughs> I've been saying kind of annoying a lot in this video. Let's try and stop that. <laughs> so, for the first of the spell cards, Abyss Script, Rise of the Abyss King, normal spell card. They're all normal spells until we get to prop. Uh, target one thing. Sorry, target face of cards on the field up to the number of attack position Abyss Actor monsters that you, with different names, you control, destroy them. If you control a level 7 or higher Abyss Actor monster, your opponent cannot activate cards or effects in response to this card's activation. If this set card in its opponent's control, I mean, in, in its owner's control, is destroyed by an opponent's card effect, and you have a face up Abyss Actor Pendulum monster in your extra deck, you can add up to two Abyss Actor cards or and or Abyss Script spell cards with different names from your deck to your hand. So, not only does this let you just mass destroy a whole bunch of stuff, and if you have a level 7 or higher, so either of the two boss monsters, it locks out your opponent responding to this. But, if it's set and gets destroyed, you get to add any two cards from your deck to your hand that have a Abyss Actor or Abyss Script in its name. Oh, and by the way, none of these effects are once per turn. This is easily the best card in the deck. Easily. Well, easily for spell cards. <laughs> okay, because the other guys search them out really 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 good not only does it just destroy a whole bunch of stuff not only does it just lock out your opponent from responding to it but it also just lets you search if it gets destroyed okay so in my testing whenever i was going against a friend of mine and i wish i was recording this uh he did not know what this deck does a lot of people don't that's one of the big cool things about abyss actors like if you're going to take this to a tournament not many people are going to know what they're going to do like how they work and everything and so he, he was playing Infernoids, he summoned Deviati, I had this card and this card over here, which we'll get to here shortly, and destroyed all my stuff, and I went like plus seven off of it, because I had no cards in hand, this card let me search two cards, and I'm just going to say it now, when this card is destroyed while it's set, you get to draw until you have five cards. <laughs> okay, stupid, stupid things, and just lets you just plus like crazy. Granted, though, stuff like that won't happen all the time, not everybody's playing Infernoids, but that's just an anecdotal uh, event that happened to me while <laughs> play testing this. Not to mention, I think my one of my P skills is Wild Hope, so I got to actually plus 8, kind of, sort of. I don't know, I can't remember how many cards I had set and he destroyed, but it really didn't matter, because I just will to decay him next turn. <laughs> anyway, so, but realistically, most people are not going to know what this deck does, because... Honestly, out of all three decks from Destiny Soldiers, nobody's paying attention to Abyss Actors. And so, nobody knows what the deck does. And so, if you're going to take this deck to a tournament of any caliber, that's going to be a really big advantage. And people are going to twin twist your back row. And you're going to be like, ha, I got to search. And then that's going to be like the only time that's going to happen. <laughs> and then that's when you actually set real back row and you're like, oh, crap. <laughs> so, really, really, really good card. They all have effects that punish your opponent for destroying them, which is, like, really, really funny. I really like that dual utility. My only issue is that you cannot trigger it yourself. If there was a way to trigger it yourself, or if it was destroyed, or if they got their effects whenever they were destroyed, period, or sent to the graveyard, period, while they were set, it'd be a lot better, because then you could just use Superstar, set it, and then let it die and face search too. If only that ha if only that worked, but whatever. <laughs> if, if maybe it'd be too broken, I don't know. Okay, so next up is opening ceremony. This is actually one of my personal favorite cards, is because I really like being able to gain life points. So gain 500 life points for each of best actor monster you control, and then as I said, if it's destroyed while set, you get to draw cards until you have five in hand. 
<laughs> that is really, really good. Uh, generally speaking, if you're ever dueling against Abyss Actress and you see your opponent just emptied their hand and set everything, that probably means they have one of these set. I'm just going to be completely honest. That probably means they have one of these set. It's a really, really good spell, just being able to gain up to 2,500 life points. There's not many easy ways to gain life points in Yu-Gi-Oh! unless you're playing, like, Arrow Mages. But even then, I really do like this card. Uh, in this deck, you do take a lot of battle damage because you got to abuse Sassy Rookie and uh, Leading Lady. So you, it's really nice being able to get those life points back. Next up for <laughs> another really, really nice card. Again, as I said, like almost all of their spells are really good, except for this card over here. So this is Fire Dragon Slayer, Abyss Script of Fire Dragon Slayer. Target one Abyss Actor monster you control. If it destroys your opponent's monster by battle this turn, your opponent banishes three monsters from your action deck, their choice. If this set card in its uh, owner's control is destroyed by an opponent's card effect, blah blah blah, you can look at your opponent's extra deck and banish one monster from their extra deck. You can only use this effect of Abyss Script fi Fire Dragon Slayer once per turn. So, the actual activating effect, you can use as many times as you want. You can activate all three, target like three evil heal you control, run over three monsters, banish nine cards out of your opponent's extra deck. That is so stupid. Granted, it doesn't happen that often, but against decks that have a lot that are like really heavy for their X check, you that's just really stupid being able to do that. Being able to get rid of more than half of their X check is really, really, really good. The destruction effect is basically a I I don't know if I would say better or worse effect in its main effect because you get to pick the card, but it's only one card versus three, so I don't know. And that being said, it does mention. I gotta mention this. It says if that monster destroys a monster by battle. Now that does not mean that it's only a once per turn. So like at once per turn if that monster destroys. No. If that monster you can somehow make it attack multiple times. That monster will be able to get rid of multiple cards out of your opponent's extract thanks to this card. And the reason why I bring that up is because one of the uh, new cards that we haven't gotten yet over here. That's also exclusive at the moment. That's one of your best actors attack multiple times. <laughs> and so you can get rid of a lot of cards out of your opponent's extract. And then we get to Fantasy Magic for the last of the Abyss scripts. Again, this card is honestly the worst. Again, like, it's just the worst out of them. And it it really does suck. Like, okay, so target one Abyss Actor monster you control. This turn, every monster that battles it but is not destroyed returns to the hand at the end of the damage step. It turns all of your it turns your guy into a grand mole, but not till after the end of the damage step. And that's the biggest issue, okay? Sure, I can target my sassy rookie. He won't be destroyed in battle by the first attack. And then I can attack something, and then, oh, hey, it goes back to hand, big whoop. But, like, yeah, that's good for getting rid of certain things, but there's just better ways of getting rid of stuff. Dark Roar is just a much better uh, board wiper. It's able to get rid of not just monsters, but also other cards. Uh, I can see how it can be really useful. Like, honestly, this card's probably better in a side deck because it's able to get rid of cards that can't be destroyed in battle or by card effects. So stuff like Beals and other Beals is I can't think of anything other than Beals that can't be destroyed by battle or card effects right now, but stuff like that. Uh, now, it does have, of course, a, a duality effect where... Uh, sorry, by duality, I mean, like, other effect, like, these, like, you know, multiple effects. Uh, where if it's destroyed, uh, you can target one card your opponent controls placed on top of their deck. It's nice and all. Honestly, this card would have been so much better if it was a quick play spell, but they can't make it a quick play spell because then Superstar wouldn't be able to get it because it has to be a... a uh, oh, wait, no, it, he could get it if it was just a quick play because it doesn't say it has to be a normal. <laughs> wait, I thought one of them did. Oh, wait, maybe it was Leading Lady who said that. Nope, none of them say, so yeah, this could have been totally a quick play, but no, Konami did not make it a quick play for some reason. Now we get to Abyss Prop Wild Wagon. This card I really do like, uh, has two really good effects, well, three really, uh, three really good effects. The biggest issue with it is that it's not an Abyss script, so it's not searchable by either Leading Lady or Superstar. You gotta draw into it, which, in my experience, hasn't been too hard. I usually see it within a few turns. So, it's a continuous spell. The first time each Abyss actor monster you control would be destroyed by battle, each, uh, each turn it is not destroyed. So, each Abyss actor you control gets protection from battle once a turn, each, which is really, really nice. Once per turn, you can target an Abyss Actor monster you control. Your opponent cannot target with target it with their card effects until the end of their turn. So even if this card leaves the field, which is really, really nice. You target one of your creatures. Oh, hey, they can't Castell it anymore. 
that's really, really nice. Just being able to target your evil heal. They can't Castell it. They can't 101 it. They can't do anything to it that targets. And of course, they can't destroy it in battle the first time around. So it makes it really hard to get over to bigger things. And I really, really do like that. It's really nice. Again, the biggest issue is that this card is not searchable right now. So, it of course, has a destruction effect. And if it's destroyed while it's set face down and you have enough best actor in your pencil, uh, in your extra deck, you can return all cards your opponent controls to hand. <laughs> really, really scary effect. Just being able to mass board wipe your opponent's field by and not destroying it either. Non targeting, non destruction removal. Really, really nice spell card. And I like it a lot. Now, is it worth running three of? Not right now. Not until maybe we get something that searches out Abyss stage. Uh, sorry, Abyss props. But I don't really see that happening too much. Or at least not yet, maybe. Uh, but really nice card either way. And then we get to the trap card. They only have one trap card, but it's a good one. <laughs> Abyss Actors Backstage. I really love this artwork, by the way. It just shows everybody like getting ready for uh, their big uh, show and everything. So if you have two Abyss Actor cards in your Pendulum Zones, add two Abyss Actor Pendulum Monsters with different names from your deck to your extra deck face up. You can only activate one Abyss Actors Backstage per turn. So the biggest downside to this is that you can only activate one per turn. But the big plus side is that you get two free monsters into your extra deck, which is amazing. Just being able to set so much up, and if you activate, if you can resolve multiple of these, heck, if you can only just resolve one, you got so much advantage because you're able to just get out your guys, you're able to get so much stuff going and your deck rolling and everything. It's really, really good. My biggest crap of it is that it's a trap card. I wish it was a spell. But hey, it's a trap card. It's really, really good. I like it a lot. It also does not have a destruction effect like the other things. But I guess that's mostly because it's not an Abyss script or an Abyss prop. Which I can I can forgive because it's such a good card. Um, now, then you're probably wondering why I have these guys. And that's because you do have the option, since everything's dark, to play uh, Polymerization or Fusion Substitute so you can make Star Venom. I don't know if it's really worth it. I tried it out. I liked it. But then again, I, I really, really like Star Venom. <laughs> and then, of course, you can play Mass Chains 2 to be able to make Dark Law and Anki. That's honestly probably better than making Star Venom. But, hey, you have options. You have lots of options for the extra deck and everything. Honestly, you don't even need any of these. Uh, now, I do also want to quickly bring up the uh, Draco Slayer stuff. Because I know somebody's going to bring it up. Draco Slayers, in my experience... I am still testing it, but in my experience, it makes very little difference to the actual deck. Because a lot of the stuff says you can't summon anything except for Abyss Actors. So, I don't know if the Draco Slayers are currently worth playing in it. Unless, like, you're just going to play the level 4s and that's it. Maybe. I don't know. I wouldn't do it because you're missing out on, like, more than half of the deck. <laughs> and if you're doing that, you're, you're probably just better off playing the uh, Performance Pile stuff with Draco Slayers. But, uh... I just want to bring up the Draco Slayers real quick. Anyway, so, on to the stuff that we don't have yet. Uh, let's start off with the one that uh, has been like known for for a while. So this is Abyss Actor, Dandy Supporting Actor. He is a scale of 8, level 2, 700 attack, 700 defense. Pretty good. And then his pendulum effect is when you pendulum summon a monster or monsters, you can add one face-up level 1 or 8 Abyss Actor pendulum monster from your extract to your hand. This card helps getting back Evil Heal and Funky Comedian and Extra from your Extra deck back to your hand. It's really, really nice because a lot of times, obviously, you're not able to summon them too much due to the skills. So you're just able to get them back, especially uh, especially Extra, because you can just keep using and abusing his effect, which is really, really, really nice. His monster effect is, if you have two Abyss Actor cards in your Pendulum Zones, you can tribute this card, special in one level, one or eight Abyss Actor Pendulum Monster is either in your hand or face up in your extra deck. You can only use this effect of Abyss Actor Dandy Supporting Actor once per turn. So, if you have two Abyss Actors in your Pendulum Zones, you can tribute them off, summon out Evil Heal for basically free. It's really nice because a lot of times you're not able to be able to special summon uh, Evil Heal off of a Pendulum Summon. And this probably honestly makes like Draco Slayer uh, engine a bit better in the deck because it lets you get around that whole, oh hey, you can't summon anything except for Abyss Actors that turn. So it is really, really nice and still allows you to get out Evil Heal and uh, of course the level 1s for some reason. <laughs> I don't know. But it's really, really good. I like them a lot. And then finally we have Twinkle Little Star. So level 4, 1000 attack, 1000 defense, scale of 9. 
or pendulum effect is you cannot pendulum summon monsters except abyss actor monsters a bit annoying but hey whatever this effect cannot be negated <laughs> It's a scale 9. Konami's going to put a, a, some sort of restriction on scale 9s. Once per turn, you can target one Abyss Actor monster you control. This turn, it can make a second and third attack on monsters during each battle phase. Also, other monsters you control cannot attack. And then her monster effect is cannot be destroyed by battle during your turn. This card can make a second and third attack on monsters during each battle phase. So, Twinkle Little Star, first and foremost, her pendulum scale effect is amazing, being able to target uh, Evil Heal, and then <laughs> target Evil Heal with uh, Fire Dragons, just being able to attack over three monsters, banish nine cards out of your opponent's attack strike, really, really, really good, and is just a fun thing to do, and very, very mean. Uh, her monster effect, at first I didn't really get until I really thought about it, it's helpful in that it does also trigger uh fire dragons there if somehow she kills something uh which you're gonna have to do with either using funky comedian or uh evil heals uh pendulum effects or you can use her in combination of fantasy magic and really honestly it's her that makes fantasy magic actually somewhat good but we don't have fantasy magic yet so i mean sorry we don't have twinkle little star yet so it's just not all that great for to even really bother with fantasy magic right now as i said fantasy magic would probably be better as a quick way but whatever so that's the deck overall right now and again the, we don't have these two yet so right now in tcg will the deck see any success i don't know i've been seeing some people talking about it maybe having some success in like regionals and stuff and really honestly i think if somebody plays it right they could maybe do really well in a tournament because this deck has a lot of potential i really do think that it has a lot of potential it can do a lot of really good things but however right now i don't genuinely know i it could probably it, it could really do maybe something at a local level but a regional level i don't know that's maybe pushing it a little bit too much but Hey, you never know. Somebody who's like really good with the deck and knows its in and outs and gets really good draws and uh, maybe is like somehow playing, like maybe has a really good build could really do well. But the biggest thing is, is that you got to play so many monsters, so many spells. In my experience, I either draw too many monsters or I draw too many spells. And then it just gets to where I'm just like, I can't do anything because I have too many spells and I can't activate Abyss Actors backstage yet because I don't have any guys and you have my pendulum zones and so the deck can brick really hard but when it doesn't brick and it does really well once this deck gets going it's really hard to stop the issue is is getting it going uh i feel like if they had more high scales that were good and of course we're getting these two uh that maybe i i wish that if they didn't like restrict stuff like, I feel like that maybe the uh, Draco Slayer engine could be a lot better if whenever we get Dandy Supporting Actor. Uh, and obviously, Twinkle Little Star is going to be really good for the deck, too, because she's gonna, just going to allow you to do so many OTKs and so many other things. But, uh, anyway, so guys, what do you guys think? What do you guys think that Abyss Actors need? Do you think that they'll be good? Or is this format? I, I don't think maybe this format, maybe in a slower format. But what do you guys think? Do you think they'll be able to do well in a tournament uh, before or after we get to the rest of the stuff? Do you think they'll get anything more? Uh, thank you all for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Have a great day. If it's your birthday, happy birthday. See you all later and peace out.